We, the children of Earth, have a responsibility to develop our own consciousness and understanding to be people of universal peace from this planet. And if we take care of that, the rest will be taken care of. If you have a golf ball size consciousness, when you read a book, you'll have a golf ball size understanding. When you look out, a golf ball size awareness and when you wake up in the morning, a golf ball size wakefulness. But if you could expand that consciousness, then you read the book, more understanding. You look out, more awareness. And when you wake up, more wakefulness. It's consciousness. And there's an ocean of pure, vibrant consciousness inside each one of us. And it's right at the source and base of mind, right at the source of thought, and it's also at the source of all matter. On a graph, these phenomena show up as spikes, such as this one. And here is where this all gets very interesting. The date of this spike is September 11th, 2001. Just a coincidence? Well, how about this spike? Oh my God! December 26th. 2005 or this one April 8th 2006 in all dozens of world events according to project scientists are linked to the random number generators acting in a very unrandom like way the deepest mystery we can explore is the mystery of consciousness do our thoughts and feelings begin and end in our brain or are they part of a larger tapestry one that connects us to everyone and everything in ways we are just beginning to understand. They are able to actually, for the first time, they are able to actually observe the human relationship between the magnetic fields of the Earth and when we're influencing those fields in, in very specific ways. Then they went back and looked at the data and said, does this only happen when bad things are present? And the answer was no, Super Bowl Sunday. The whole world is, is watching, and it's influencing the magnetic fields of the Earth. Uh, the funeral of De uh, Princess Diana, the whole world came together. Um. The September 6, 1997 funeral of Princess Diana yielded a major signal in the data. Global compassion following tragedy of major world figures or world loss of life yielded the strongest spikes in the data. If um, something like Princess Diana's funeral was bringing two billion people to think about the same thing and maybe feel sadness or compassion together, that we should try to see whether our machines, our random event generators, could detect that, could react to it. So um, in that particular case, I asked all of my colleagues and friends who did the same kind of research, Please take data. We had several lines of data in Europe, several lines of data in this country, put them all together, and uh, remarkably enough, or maybe not so surprising if you believe uh, the data from the laboratory experiments, we have a big, strong effect. Um, uh, if you did the same thing a hundred times, you wouldn't see the size of um, change in our REG devices that we saw during the time of the funeral of Princess Diana. Later had another instance where uh, Princess Diana uh, was killed in a, a car crash and her funeral was scheduled a week in advance so we, we figured we can use that as another example of lots of attention around the world for one event. And we got I think 12 of us around the world got our random number generators going and we analyzed the result and again was significant deviation from randomness towards order during the period of the funeral when lots of people were watching. And we thought, well, this, this is great. This is an interesting experiment. But we had to, we had to go through a lot of, of work to get everybody to participate at the same time.
Ever been to a concert or sporting event where the atmosphere was electric, almost like there was something more than just the event going on in the room? Something connecting everyone there. Well, there are scientists out there trying to prove what you felt actually was something real. As NBC 11's Garvin Thomas shows us, it's a global experiment taking place in part right here in the Bay Area. Some of the reality TV programs, believe it or not, the whole world stops what they're doing. They want to see who the bachelor chooses as his bride because they love a love story, you know. But the point is it doesn't take something bad, it's something big. And when many people can come together uh, tuning their hearts through what we would call positive emotions of care, gratitude, appreciation, we create a collective field that is scientifically documented now. The thinking is, there is something which connects all our minds, a global consciousness, if you will. And on 9-11, for example, instead of everyone concentrating on different or random things, we all focused on the same thing. That non-random pattern in the global consciousness is then somehow registered by the eggs. The next step, though, is the one that people mostly question. Because if inside our heads we are exploiting that gap, that needs, it means that we have quantum development in the system which takes us to a level somewhat beyond present technology in our experiments. Experiments still support quantum mechanics, and we have not yet seen where something new has to come in. But there are good reasons, in my opinion, when we look at going back to these two major revolutions of 20th century physics, quantum mechanics on the one hand, Einstein's theory of general relativity, space-time is not flat, it's curved, gravity is not a force, it's somehow a curvature. There is some, something quite different from other kinds of physics going on there. If you bring these two great theories together, we see this conflict suggests strongly that there must be a change in the rules of quantum mechanics at a certain level. And that certain level is not too unreasonable that it should be relevant in the brain. Oh, by the way, the reason we did this is because we knew that events would occur that we couldn't predict and, and that would attract a lot of attention. We wanted to see what would happen under those cases. I think we are destined um, to either become this layer of intelligence for the Earth, uh, collaborating to do the job that we are best fit to do, which is monitor um, and um, enable and protect uh, the Earth, which is the home we have, the only home. The Global Consciousness Network has scientific data showing similar responses to many world events, such as Earth Day and world healing events. Major earthquakes reflect in the data hours in advance of the actual earthquakes, showing that the global consciousness field is not limited to what human beings directly perceive. This is one of now over 200 such events, things like gigantic tsunamis, earthquakes, political events, the, the death of celebrities, unexpected things. Those kind of events go into our database. And what we do then is we have this ongoing, continuous random stream from around the world. We, we have a formal way of saying, well, th this event is either predicted or an event occurs and we go back later and we analyze the result um, through, through a standard method that we use. And we can see whether this 
worldwide random system is behaving randomly or not. And when you look at composite over the 200 some events, the odds against chance are over a million to one now. Organizers say, however, the GCP is not about predicting the future. It is about understanding ourselves and our world. Because the project is still in the early stages, they say they will need much more data and many more world-changing events before they reach any mind-changing conclusions. So we have good statistical reasons to believe that the random generators are not behaving randomly when there are large-scale events that attract a lot of attention. At this point, we don't know then which direction the arrow of causation goes. We don't know whether it's simply a lot of human minds that are somehow changing randomness, or whether this is a reflection of something bigger, something like a collective mind, of which the collective mind attends to something, and collective mind includes everything else, including what we think of as matter and energy. And so the attention, the change that we see in randomness may be the same in, in some way. It's the same kind of organizing event that changes random events, it also changes our attention. But again, I don't know which direction the, the arrow of causation goes, and maybe it's so complex there is no single arrow. Maybe a, a, some giant system of some type. To be a, a field where people are less aggressive, um, more willing to cooperate to solve their problems, uh, and if, if we were ever gonna do that uh, at a time on the planet, I think right now is, is a really good time to do that. Because there is this resonant effect through the force, if you wanna look at it that way, through this entangled, interwoven consciousness field. We are all one. We're one. Diversity up here, unity down below. And so I encourage you to bring your heart into coherency as many times as you can in a day and to bring coherency to your life um, and to all the people around you that way because you influence them through the fields. Uh, we know now that we're all connected and that you influence everything around you and outside everywhere in the universe as a whole. So as much as you can go into coherency and bring that space of coherence and, and love and understanding and joy and empathy for the world, you're making a huge difference. Thank <laughs> you.